Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are joined here today by One Tree Yoga and just the one half of One Tree Yoga. Gabe, joining us here. Uh, excited to have her here. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself to our listeners and viewers today? Absolutely. So I am Gabe Gabrielle Hop, and uh, I am in Omaha, Nebraska. I am one half of uh, the dynamic duo that owns One Tree Yoga. And we are a uh, yoga studio. We've been in business for over 20 years. Uh, we've got two locations in Omaha, and we're also on the web. You can take um, most of our classes via Zoom, and you can also find tons of classes and meditations on our YouTube channel. Awesome. And how do we reach you? It's OneTreeYoga.com and on YouTube as well. And on YouTube, you can DM us um, through Facebook or Instagram. You could also send us an email. Our um, email account is info, like information, I-N-F-O at, one, at OneTreeYoga.com. All right. So it's time to meet um, our yoga teacher today, Gabe Hop. Tell us about yourself. This is good. We get to go back to the nitty gritty here. I love it. Yeah, we, you know, Allison and I were talking and it's always like really nice to humanize your yoga teacher, you know, to like get, know some personal details and yoga teachers get put on a pedestal a lot mm -hmm. um, as sort of this, you know, we have this like kind of superhuman <laughs> reputation um, or, you know, uh, when people like learn about <laughs> ha us having real lifestyles, it's like, oh, thank God, like I... <laughs> You know, I am also a person slogging through. So, so that was our idea behind the show today. So, um, yeah, you're here to dispel to... the myth. You're not superhuman. I you're a am. human just like us. Tell us. So exactly. tell mm -hmm. us about yourself. If you don't mind anything too personal, you can, you know, it's up to you what you want to share or not share, but clearly we'll learn about your yoga journey, but just about you in general as a person, I think it's good to get to know. I agree. So um, I actually live in a tiny town that's between the two largest cities in Nebraska, Omaha and Lincoln. And uh, so I'm about a half an hour outside of Omaha. It's a little town called Ashland. It's super cute. It's like a Hallmark movie town. Is it really? <laughs> yes, oh my like gosh. The, Ashland, Nebraska. Total, I'm going to look that up. It's a total destination for people from Omaha and Lincoln, even people all over the state. Um, just like a ton of really cute shops and really, really sweet place to be. So um, I live in Ashland with my husband, uh, Lucas. We've been married for um, almost seven years. It'll be seven years next week. And uh, we have two little boys. Um, they are on the cusp of five and three. And our oldest, um, the almost five-year-old is named Ralph. And our little guy is named Teddy. Let's see what else. So I- We have pets. I, Do we have any pets? Yes, we do. We have one cat. We have an old, old, old three-legged cat named Moose. Uh, we hope that she, you know, is with us for many more years, but she's 17. So she's, you know, she's getting up there. Oh, well, we'd love to hear more. Okay. So we got the family. You got, um, you know, just curious, were you born in Nebraska? How did you get to yeah. Ashland? Yep. Yep. So um, I was born in Counts of Bluffs, which is a teeny town um, across the river in Iowa. That's where both of my parents grew up. But I grew up in Omaha. Um, I went to 12 years of Catholic school in Omaha. I went to um, Catholic grade school and then an all girls Catholic high school. And then um, at the end of that, I went away for quite a few years. So I did my undergraduate degree in Evansville, Indiana, which is a fairly small town um, in Southern Indiana. It's a liberal arts college, which was why I chose it. And then I lived in California briefly to do my um, internship for my undergraduate degree, lived in the central coast of California. And then I came back and I did a, I did a graduate degree in at Lincoln, which is like the big school, the big university in Nebraska, the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. And then I kind of, and then I bopped around for a while. I was, I spent um, several years in Minneapolis. I spent some time in Prague in the Czech Republic, in um, Austin, Texas. And then finally, um, the the woman who owned One Tree Yoga at the time, this was in like 2013, mm -hmm. she said, why don't you come back to, to Nebraska? We need somebody to team up with Allison to do teacher training. We have a management position for you. You can basically like 
be a yogi as your life, mm-hmm. which is, you know, what I was dying to do. I was for years, I was teaching yoga and then like waiting tables to make, you know, make it all work. So um, this was an opportunity to be a full-time yogi and I couldn't say no. So I've been back here for a- almost a decade now. Wow. Well, excited to have you. Excited to hear your backstory. And then here you are, um, you know, obviously as a co-owner of the yoga studio and as a mom, as a wife, you yeah. got a lot on your plate. Do you still have time for other hobbies besides yoga? I mean, is there something that we should know? Believe it or not, I do. <laughs> so I am someone who, uh, you know, my flow state is like, give me a to-do list, 25 things long, and I will like very happily work through, check all those babies off. Uh, so, you know, I like a full, I live a pretty full lifestyle. So um, the I have a side gig, which is that I sell vintage clothes. Ooh. Yeah, so um, I've been doing that for uh, over a decade as well. And I got into it um, when I lived in Minneapolis. I... Um, worked at an antique store and the woman who owned it, she taught me how to identify vintage clothes and how to, you know, know like what they were worth. And um, my sister and my cousin are also into it. So the three of us kind of, you know, we um, have been doing this together for a while. And it's just like this really fun hobby that I do. I love outfitting people. I um, fancy myself a (laughs) somewhat of a stylist um of you know people how people will look in vintage clothes and you know my goal is always like that I can provide something that people feel really good in um Mm -hmm. something that's flattering for their body shape so so that's that's kind of my main side gig hobby um my degrees uh are both in music and so we have a family piano that we inherited from my grandma my husband plays guitar. I play some guitar. Um, so we've got music going on in the household. Do the kids um, play? Yet? Awesome. What they, they are. Yeah, they have all of their like kid instruments. So the boys, they have like shakers, they have bongos, they have a little, you know, mini guitar. Um, the older one loves to like do extemporaneous songwriting, just like pretend he has a microphone and make Aww. up lyrics to songs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so everybody's in the Everybody's in the music mix. And um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my the other main thing that I like to spend my time doing is reading. I'm a I'm a reading enthusiast. Um, I have an awesome book club in Ashland. Actually, I um, met this group of there's eight of us, um, eight women. And you know, when you move to a tiny town where you don't know anybody, you don't know if you're going to be able to make friends or you know. Um, how long that's going to take, but I was super lucky to, to connect with these women pretty early on. Um, just, you know, within a year or two of moving here and they're all, you know, my best friends in town. And, uh, it's awesome to be in a book club of, you know, with people who are like relatively like-minded and they're, you know, we're all in the same age range and just the variety of books that we're interested in and choose. It's, it's so cool to, like read stuff that I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally pick on my own. And, and I love reading and then talking about it and, and, you know, having that, that social outlet as well. Awesome. Do you have a favorite book? Oh, or genre of books do you like? I, I largely read fiction, but I okay. kind of always try to have a yoga book going mm-hmm. at the same time. You know, we're lucky to be in this era of yoga because there is there's so much literature on yoga. And so um, you can all, you know, hey, they, I, I mean, I there, there's, there's yoga books at my tiny town library, you know, like, it's- oh my, well, I, I don't to be honest with you. I don't even know. Uh, you probably will know the concept of yoga, the name yoga. Where did it come from and when was it developed? Okay, so it's a great question. Actually, I just taught on this this weekend. So, oh, good. So you're um, really very timely. Yeah. I was like, if you have to yeah. Google, I could Google too. But wait, <laughs> tell me, tell me. So we've got, we're going to go all the way back to like 1500 BC. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. So we're talking, you know, th- three and a half thousand years ago. Um, it's basically like, that's when the first teachings uh, on yoga started to proliferate. It's, um, it doesn't get like really solidified into yoga as the way that we okay. think of it until like 
1300, 1400 AD. So, but still, you know, yeah, 600 years ago. Um, but the early teachings of yoga, they come from India. Um, the word yoga means union or like the, the, the um, root word translates to the word yoke. Okay. Y-O-K-E, which with the idea to like yoke okay. oxen to Got a it. cart. So, so the, the yoking over the uniting of something okay. and yoga can be the night, the uniting of lots of things. But like in modern times, we think of the mind body connection, mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know, uniting our like individual consciousness with the cosmic consciousness, like just, you know, recognizing our space within humanity and how we are all interconnected. Got it. Yeah, that's the, there's the quick and dirty <laughs> where you didn't came know from. that. I learned something <laughs> yeah. new. That's not, yeah, that's like a basic. We, we've had quite a few sessions, we have a few podcasts here. We've talked about this, but <clears throat> interesting. Wow. All right. I'm interested more. And that's still, I can't believe it's that, that modality is this model is that old. I didn't, I thought it was know, more like a yeah. 20th century type thing. No. So, you know, the poses, like originally it was a practice of meditation and breath mm-hmm. work and, energy work, but the poses, you know, there's, there's 600, 700 years old and we still do them today. Right. It's like, they're not different than what they were doing 700 years ago. And I love to teach this material. We were just teaching it in our teacher training program this weekend. I love to teach this material because it's like humans were doing the same thing, you know, 2000, 3000 years ago, they were thinking about the same things and they're still re- totally relevant and pertinent today. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. Awesome. All right. Uh, now mm-hmm. clearly you, your passion is yoga. That's what we're, you know, here talking about, but um, is there something in particular that you really love? Like, do you have a favorite yoga type of yoga? Uh, do you like certain classes better than others to teach or to take? Uh, share your thoughts on that if you can. Yeah. Um, oh, it's so hard to pick one favorite. Um, I have, so I started out as a hot yogi, um, which I think we've talked about hot on the, on the program. It's 105 degrees. It's the same 26 poses every time. Um, it's this very disciplined practice. So that's how I started. I I was into the like rigor of Mm -hmm. this is hot. This is hard. This is disciplined. Um, And then, um, you know, I branched into basically all the other styles of yoga and I, and I truly practice them all. I practice, um, more, you know, athletic aerobic vinyasa style. I love to do more, um, you know, long hold stability with lots of props, Hatha style. I like to do low key lay on the floor, restorative and lay, lay on the floor and roll around, um, styles as well. So if I had to pick a current favorite, <laughs> I would say it is our hybrid style that we call yin yasa, which is like a slow flow. You know, it's just really accessible. It really like is feels just lovely in your body. And um, in my slow flow classes, I try to always include, you know, five minutes of meditation. So you get the you get that mind body connection as well. Um I will also say that yoga, you know, when we think of yoga, of course, we think of like poses and and the body, but tons of yoga practices are not not body oriented. And mm-hmm. so um, one of my favorite other things to do yoga wise is is chanting. So we do we chant um, or like sing um, a chant in the Sanskrit language that like exemplifies the qualities of something that we want to like bring with us as we do our practice. Mm, all right. Thank you. I got to ask, do the kids do yoga too? They are. Yes, they do like to do spontaneous yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, I am someone who, you know, like I totally want them to do yoga, but also when I'm doing my practice, like that's my practice time. So uh, the, I tend to like keep it a little bit separate, um, but their dad likes to do yoga. So they that's do what I was some gonna yoga say, Is him. it a family yeah. affair? So dad does yeah. too. Okay. <laughs> he does. Yep. Yep. And he's actually, he's an old school yogi. He learned in college. So he's been doing yoga for, you know, 20, 25 years as well. Does he take your classes? Or do you he did before we had kids. <laughs> oh, now, now who has the time, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Occasionally, you know, my folks will 
take the boys for the weekend and he gets a class in here and there, but uh, yeah, not as, not as easy as it used to be. I know. Well, what is a typical day like for you now? I mean, let's talk yeah. day compared to weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, small business owners are kind of always working. Um, and Allison and I are lucky. We are able to be business owners and do what we want, like do our passion work, but also take care of our kids. And mm -hmm. so um, a typical day for me is like kid stuff um, mm -hmm. from the get, you know, <laughs> you know, first thing yeah. uh, is kid stuff. But I try to, as I mentioned last week, I think I try to start my day with meditation. So okay. I do my best to get up before anybody else. And I sit right on like the pillows in my bed and I try to do 10 minutes of meditation before I do anything else, before I look at my phone, before I go get coffee. Um, and so meditation and then kids yeah. stuff. And then once they, you know, start playing together, usually after breakfast, they're, they're game to like do Legos for an extended period of time. Then I can get on the computer and do some administrative work, um, in my ideal world, I would have a little bit of time for practice once I drop the older one off at preschool and the younger one takes his nap. Um, give me a little practice time in the afternoon. And then and then I go teach in the evening or sometimes I teach in the morning. Um, so, you know, teaching is a big part of it. And then Allison and I have our once a month um, teacher training program. So mm -hmm. there's one weekend a month that she and I are, are at the studio all weekend. Got it. So now. it's kind of like, you know, you're just uh, kind of piecing it together. It's like, I know that, you know, I have this ongoing to do list of yoga studio things that I have to do. And I'm just kind of, for now, I'm sneaking them in while the kids are playing together or napping or, you know, at preschool. And so looking forward to in a couple of years when they're both at school and I can maybe take on another class or. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> hard. Yeah. And what, what time, what time is wake up time for you and for the kids and what time do you go to bed? I try to get up. So I go to bed. Uh, I, <laughs> I try to get in bed about nine 30 and mm -hmm. I'm sleeping by 10 30 and then I'm up at six 30 okay. and then eight hours minimum type of gal. Um, the kiddos are like eight or eight 30 to seven 30 typically. Wow. The older one will sleep in a little bit later, but the little one, he's up and at them. Mm. What about you? Are your kids early uh, risers? They, no, we get up at seven 30 now. I, I spent mm -hmm. half of my life getting up at two in the morning, basically for all those years working for the morning news. Oh, so now, course. now I, um, with my new schedule the past few years, I have normal hours and, but now I really need my sleep and I, and it's like, I'm mm -hmm. catching up for all the lack of sleep. I really believe you can. We get up at seven 30, literally jump up and the kids get on the bus at eight like 20. So I mm -hmm. try to sleep as late as possible. I make sure they bathe the night before and they're dressed. Yep. So it, that cuts out so much headache of trying to pick out the outfit, who's fighting to wearing what, go down, right. breakfast, brush teeth. And then the day begins, right? Because then work is like nine o'clock for me or 10 and yeah. till four. Then they, they, are, they come home from school. And then every night though, now this is when they get a little older. I don't know their activities, but my guys have, oh gosh, well, wrestling, soccer, football, um, ice skating, uh, religion now it's every night they have to be somewhere right <laughs> yeah 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 that's the hard we part are, that yeah. I never accounted for I didn't realize that yeah <laughs> we have, so Allison and I have a, an absolutely amazing life coach and she told us to start thinking about you know like plot out the future of your business based on the fact that you guys are moms and that in the next few years, your little kids will actually be medium kids who will be in 1000 activities and who is going to bring them. And how is that going to work in yeah. your, you know, in your yoga, life. yoga yeah, life because at nights? Yeah. You probably used to teaching classes at night. All of a sudden it's like, well, I have 100%. to be here. I have to be there. Yeah. That's a yeah. whole nother aspect. It's, it's, it's very stressful. I never, no one ever warned me to plan for this. Yeah. I, I didn't realize it. <laughs> I just thought, the, I, yeah. Yeah. I kind of knew it was coming because I was a really active kid. I was in a bunch of things. Um, but, you know, it's always different in reality than what you think it's going to be like or mm -hmm. what anybody tells you it's going to be like. And by the way, what's your birth sign? Oh, I'm a Capricorn. 
Oh, January what? Did we discuss this? I'm January 10th. Oh, I'm the 12th. We're oh so my close. God. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I don't know. Oh my gosh. And my son's the fifth. You, so we got it. My son's the fifth. Okay. Are you, do you have like strong Capricorn qualities? I think so. I think so. I, mean, I'm, I think I'm. Mean, I think so. Is OCD part of them? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, the, like, yeah, kind of controlling, like That's wanting an- to be in charge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for sure. Interesting. Oh, cool. I didn't know that we shared that aspect. All right. Wow. See, we're learning a lot today here. Uh, Gabe, just remind us for listeners that are just tuning in. Uh, OneTreeYoga.com is the website. And again, how else can we reach out to you? Again, beginners intermediate, um, advanced, you offer all types of courses, men and women and virtual and in person. If you're in the Omaha, uh, Nebraska area. That's right. We got it all. Um, a great resource is our YouTube channel. One tree yoga. Um, there are tons of videos of like varying lengths and abilities and styles and some that are just meditation or just breath work. Um, so if you want to get to know, like how, you know, we teach as a studio, that's a great, great spot to check it out. And then we're on, um, zoom in most of our classes, um, with the exception of hot in person, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and our website, one And, um, we also have some, um, like online training videos that you can purchase. So you can do, you can purchase uh, like a five week beginner series that you can do in the comfort of your home with notes and like how to practice. Um, so that's a great resource for brand new people as well. Awesome. What else do we need to know about you? Come on, come on. We still have five minutes. Let's talk. Uh, <laughs> any juicy scoop? Come on. Oh, the juicy scoop. Woof. <laughs> uh let's see well we can talk about I think it's always interesting to hear people's own yoga journey how did you you know how did you get into this so um when I was about 10 I was hanging from some monkey bars and I know here we go and when I let (laughs) when I let go hit the ground in such a way that I I fractured my spine So my like low, my lumbar spine was it like compressed and my dad is a physical therapist and he's a hands-on physical therapist. So he decompressed it, but, but didn't, we didn't know that it was fractured and I was in a lot of pain, but you know, it was like, my parents are awesome. I'm not trying to disparage my parents, but it was like (laughs) the first, it was like right before the first day of school. It was like the first week of school. And they thought that I just didn't want to go to school. So they were like, go to school. You're fine. (laughs) Um, I wasn't, but, um, so my dad continued to work on it and it, and it basically, um, the fracture healed, but wasn't well aligned. Mm -hmm. So then when I got older in high school, I, I started to experience a lot of back pain. I had to wear a back brace for years and I had to do like, I went to chiropractic and and PT again. And um, we can briefly considered um, having surgery. And my dad is, you know, he's like into holistic medicine and he was like, why don't you try yoga? So, uh, and of course I was like, you don't know anything, dad. So I put that off for a couple of years, but when eventually I did, I got, I um, started to do the DVD that he gave me. Uh, I was like literally instantly hooked. Mm-hmm. Um, this was in 2003. So this is actually my 20th year of practice and I loved it. And I did it like every day. It was a, a DVD with Patricia Walden. She's a really famous, famous yogi from the Iyengar school of yoga. And um, I did it, I'd say for like a month. And then I went back to my, I was like home for Christmas um, from college. And then I went back to my, university to in Evansville, Indiana. And there was one yoga studio and I started going there four times a week and really just like, you know, it was like that instant connection. I kind of never looked back. Um, I've had periods where I practice more than others, but, um, I've just always been drawn to it. And I, I've always wanted to know everything there is to know about it and, and fully immerse. Now I did my, um, this is, May, this is maybe my juiciest scoop. I did my first teacher training program in Prague in the Czech Republic because I was um, 
I was trying to stay for a long time with an ex-boyfriend who was in Prague. So I went, um, so I was able to get a longer visa because I was like basically in school in, in a yoga teacher training program. So it was not like maybe the ideal program, but it was like, it was a great thing for me to like do while I was there. I, it meant that I like made friends and I had, um, I had something to do while I was there. And then, it, and that actually set me on the path of teaching. So mm-hmm. um, that was 2009. And then I started teaching like right at, right in 2010, as soon as I was done with the program and uh, like right away wanted that to be my life's work. So I've really gone all in since then. Amazing. And the expansion of your own business and how exciting that is, right? Um, it's so exciting. I know you guys yes. talked about that last time about how it's changed, where it's like your owner operator, but now it's like, now you've come to the point where you have people working underneath you to help manage everything, right? Yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's not you doing everything, picking up the phone, yeah. answering the call, scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> totally. What a dream to be able to delegate here. And, and what's there. the dream for the future for you and for One Tree Yoga? Let's end that way. Do you see any, any future? Um, you know, what are your expectations and your hopes? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's something that Allison and I talk about all the time. So, um, you know, there's the precedent set at One Tree because we've been in business for so long and we kind of like, I think people are always like, what's your, how are you going to grow? How are you going to make more money? How are you going to, you know, it's like this entrepreneurial mindset and we're kind of like, well, it's going great. Like, (laughs) can we just like, like do what we do best and and just keep doing it. So uh for for the foreseeable future, we see just like, you know, the kind of maintaining the status quo, uh teaching, you know, what we think is the best yoga in town, um continuing to grow our teacher mm-hmm. training program. Um she and I are always interested in in going to trainings and so she and I will continue to to train on our own and learn more and bring that back to our students and yeah. All right. Just and someone keep out it there rolling. has not tried yoga yet. Why should they come to One Tree Yoga? Yeah. Well, um, mm. yoga, just generally yoga, it changed my life. It's, uh, you know, it sounds kind of cliche, but really it transformed my life and, and continues to do so on a daily basis. I would not be where I am or who I am without yoga. So um, I, I advocate for any yoga practice. But uh, if you come to One Tree Yoga, it's the real deal. We we teach yoga as a discipline. We will teach you why yoga matters, how how to understand yoga, how to do it in your body in a way that's comfortable and um, makes you feel better all around. Awesome. Thank you again. And uh, Gabe, pleasure having you here. If someone does want to reach out to you, OneTreeYoga.com is the place to be. That's it. All right. Thank you so much for being here, for joining us and uh, for going solo. Very brave. Yeah. (laughs) And we'll see Allison next week. Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic day and good luck with the kids. And I'm warning you, it's going to get rough. Rough, rough. uh, (laughs) So rough. It's so stressful. Tonight is the one night we don't have anything because wrestling ended. I'm so excited. Have a great night. I will. Thank Thank you so much. Bye bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.